Okay, guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shini here, and this is my channel. So, if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, I would advise just go to my channel and subscribe to this particular page and hit the bell to get notifications. If you have any queries or if you have any doubts or suggestions or any topics you want me to take videos, you're free to send me an email at this particular email address. I'll be happy to help. Uh, in a previous session, we have covered the exception handling three parts. So if you haven't gone over the exception handling initial videos yet, just go over my Java playlist and you'll be able to get the concept and then come back to this session. So we are going to continue from where we stopped last time. So we have seen all these major types of exception handling and now we are left with throws clause, throw new, custom exception and then there is one more topic which I would like to take that is exceptions propagation. So we are going to see all these topics, the last four. So let's look at this throws clause. So let's get to the practical part. So this is where we stopped last time. So let's just create one more method. Let's say M2. Now what we want to do in this one is that we want to throw exception. Rather than doing try catch, we are going to throw exception. That's the part. So we are just going to do the similar scenario. Let's say we are having this. Let's not talk about string index out of one exception. Let's say this is a string I have. And it is having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 characters are there. right? So I'll just print out the length here. Now I want to access the index eighth index of this particular string, which is not existing. So it's going to give me exception. So I'll say so we have a method in string called care at. So in this method, we are going to give the index what we want, which particular character we want to retrieve at which index is it present so we can give that so if I give 8 that will become the ninth element actually which isn't existing here 0 1 2 3 4 it's not 9 for sure so it's going to give you exception here string index out of one exception here so you just have to call this m2 method since it's a static method we do not create any object here now we can just run this program Yeah, so we have done, we've called this M1 method first and then we've called M2 method. That is why you see these initial messages actually, but those are already covered as a part of my previous session. So the second part, if you see the string length is eight, but we are trying to access ninth index. That is, we are trying to access here, char at eighth position means ninth index because strings always the first element starts from zero. So it gave us string index out of bounds exception. So the one way what we saw last time was try catch, then try catch, finally try multi catch, etc, etc. Now the other method to do accept, handle this exception is that we should be throwing the exception. So method should throw the exception. So the syntax here is that you should be mentioning it besides the method name, say throws keyword and then use the exception which you want to throw. So it is throwing string index out of bounds exception. So just handle it this way. Right. But even if you run the program now, still what will happen? Right. So M1 got executed. That's fine. M2 got called. It is throwing you string index out of bond exception. So if someone is throwing you some object, there should be someone to catch it. So main method has not caught any exception yet. If you see when M2 call gets returned back to here, it is just expecting it to print this line. It is not catching any exception here. Either you have to put a try catch block here or this main method has to throw exception. But if main method throws the exception, then there is no one to catch it again. So you have to handle the exception by using try catch block. Finally, because main method is the final part of your program, right? So after this, there is no one else to catch the exception. So you have to handle the exception here. So what I'll do is first I'll just show you without doing try catch. I'll just put this particular exception type here and let's run this program. 
have not done any exception handling in main method. Now let's run the program. As we discussed, so it has thrown the exception and main method was not able to catch it or handle it. That is why it is now throwing this exception at this particular line when it has returned back to main method. That is this line number 61. So we need to put try catch. So I have put the statement inside the try block. I have to handle the exception. And you can just print the exception. So let's copy this line. It has encountered in main method because we are now in the main method. Fine. So we are going to handle the exception now after the call has been returned from the M2 method. And now let's run this program. So as you could see here that we have got multiple exceptions in this example, but both have been handled and even we have reached to the end of our execution and this line got printed. So this is how you do exception handling using throws clause. So I hope that is clear to everyone. So now we are going to look at the next part that is in this slide. If you see throw new clause, that is we can throw some exception explicitly. We want to forcibly throw some exception that is throw new clause. So for that, let's create another method. And let's say in this case, it is M3. And let's remove this close part. Let's just ask user to give some input. Uh, okay. So let's say int number. There is some number I'm just inputting from the user. I'm just saying if num is greater than zero, then fine. So if it, let's say it's less than zero, then I want to throw some exception. So this is a syntax throw new, and I can give exception here. So I'm just saying in this example, an unchecked exception called arithmetic exception. And this is a syntax to do that. Right. So arithmetic exception, it's not able to get. So let's look at what is the exact issue here. Change to arithmetic exception. Yeah, there's a small spelling mistake. Yeah. So throw new arithmetic exception. Else, I want to say number and this print the number is greater than zero. Simple program. Now let's call this M3 method. We'll keep the other things as it is. We would want them to execute in a flow. So let's keep them as it is and let's call M3 method. So I think we will have to make it static. Let's have a look. It is static, public static void M3. Yeah, we have to pass a parameter. So let's say here it is minus two, I'm passing. So when I'm passing minus two, it should come into the try block. No try block, I mean the if part, and it will throw arithmetic exception. Now, if this method M3 throws arithmetic exception, in the main method, I should be having something to catch the arithmetic exception. Otherwise, again, it's going to abruptly stop. So let's run it and see first. That is what it has abruptly stopped here. So we have to handle it. So we are going to again put a try block. And this we are going to put the arithmetic exception type. So arithmetic exception encountered in main. So now let's run this program and see. So now your program has got successfully completed end to end and all the exceptions are handled. So this is covering our throws clause, throw new clause. Now let's come back to one particular concept called custom exceptions. See custom exceptions as the name suggests, it's not standard exception. It is something like user defined exceptions. So for that, we are going to create one more class inside this package and let's call it as exception own something like that we can give our own name so i'm having this exception here only thing is that we we should be having this particular exception extends exception class so this is how we create our exception class custom exception class 
so it will have a constructor and in this one so i will be getting some string right i should be getting some message from the user what exception they want to throw so since i'm doing inheritance concept here i'm inheriting a super class called exception i should be calling the super class that is exception class passing this message first this is the thing which we have to take care and we can also add our own lines of code here we can say exception own exception encounter right and if whatever message extra whatever user has given let's print it so we have just appended the str variable using the plus operator now what you have to do we were in this particular program right so instead of throwing arithmetic exception let's just say i create one more method now let's say import and let's call import let's club it because both are going to give me arithmetic exception so why to have a separate try block when both of them are giving me the same arithmetic exception let's say minus 3 in this case so both are going to lead to arithmetic exception because uh yeah so in this case we are going to modify a bit right so we will have to put this inside another catch block or we will have to add a extra catch block because it is not arithmetic exception we are going to get this exception own type from so we are going to handle it here so we are going to create the object of our exception e we will come back to this error in a while now let's just focus on this coding part so we are going to throw exception own whatever we have created our own exception class here we are going to throw that but it is giving you a error here because you should be matching it with a string so you should say arithmetic exception encounter we can give our own message as value of inputted number if you want you can just print that particular num variable as well is less than 0 so okay so it has said here unhandled exception type exception own so this is very important to understand that why is it throwing this particular exception that is because it is a checked exception it is not a runtime or a unchecked exception so always remember this thing that whenever you have checked exceptions they have to be handled at compile time you cannot have your program to run it or wait for it to run no compiler will throw you error right away like this what it is known as the error the reason you are able to throw string index out of bound exception or throw arithmetic exception was was because these were all runtime exceptions and as you create your own exceptions like custom exceptions or if you basically let's say if in case instead of arithmetic here let's say it was like file not found exception this is also a checked exception so this is going to throw you error right away it is not going to allow you okay, let's say if i import still it will ask you to throw or surround with try catch because these are checked exceptions and checked exceptions have to be handled at the compile time right so let's come back to here so we have to handle it either using the throws clause or the try catch let's go by the throws clause so this is throwing a exception own this is also not able to handle it or catch it it is saying okay instead of catching it let me throw it again so whoever is calling this m4 method now has to catch it otherwise this is going to throw you a exception error at the end of your program so i am going to catch it here and i'm going to see my custom exception encountered in main method and i'm going to print it so now let's look at this particular program so we are going to call m4 and we are going to pass it a number and now it should be able to handle all the exceptions whatever it encounters in the program so let's run this program yeah so let's see what has happened here so it has reached end of main method and it has given me m3 minus 2 okay what about this uh, m4 minus 3 that has not executed because this word already got executed so let's comment out this particular portion and now let's run the program yeah so now you could see here that we have this exception encountered 
and in the main method also we have got this exception pot and this particular message what we are getting exception on exception encountered is from this particular one since we are doing sys out here if you don't want to put sys out here if it is making you more confused just comment it out and run this program so you will be getting this one line of code in your main method so this is how you do create custom exceptions create a own class just to summarize call your super class constructor passing the message what you want to be called and then you use it using throw new clause that is how you use it you have to use throw new clause like this and then give the message throws we use it at the method heading line and throw new we use it when we want to do it within the method definition right now let's look at the exception propagation but it's a big, bit of a big topic so we will keep it for the next session so hope you like this video and if you do like it do share with your friends and do hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed to my channel yet stay tuned for more videos thank you